Hello guys, welcome to another video. This is one of the most important videos on this channel if you want to live in Spain and invest in real estate. This video will be divided in five parts, which I'll briefly explain now. The first part we're going to talk about Spain as a whole, the political divisions of Spain, what is an autonomous community and how Spain is divided in autonomous communities and then these communities are divided into provinces. Then we will talk about prices per square meter in Spain as a whole and in different communities and then we will go through some resources you can use to find a cheap house or apartment in Spain. In the second part of this video we're going to talk about Idealista, which is the largest real estate portal in Spain. And then we're going to talk about its features and how you can use it to find cheap properties. Then we're gonna go through some examples of cheap properties in Spain that I have selected just randomly. And then we are going to do some considerations when buying cheap properties in Spain. What you need to think about and what are the pros and cons of buying cheap property in Spain. And finally, we're gonna talk about the golden visa in Spain if you want to invest in real estate, the requirements, the advantages and the disadvantages of it. So before we start with the actual content, I have to say what I have to say to help with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to travel, move or invest abroad, hit the like button, check our other videos and most importantly, subscribe. Let's start. We will start this video taking a look at the political map of Spain. Spain has 17 autonomous communities, which can be roughly compared to states in the US or provinces in Canada. Some of them collect different taxes and they also happen to have some different laws. Apart from the fact that they can be culturally very different, with some of them even having their own languages. The differences do not stop there. As we can see from this chart, prices per square meter in these regions can also be significantly different. Using this as our point of start, we can have an idea on where to start to look for cheap apartments and houses in Spain. We can then move to this map that shows which are the cheapest municipalities in Spain in terms of price per square meter. And finally, we can look at Idealista, which is the largest real estate web portal in Spain. I'm not an affiliate of this website, but if you want to look for real estate in Spain, this is probably the best place to start. They also have a pretty strong presence in Portugal and Italy. The website is pretty intuitive, as you can see. Let's do a quick search. And now let's take a look at some examples I randomly chose for this video. So, the first example I want to bring to you is this beautiful apartment in Talavera de la Reina, which is not extremely far from Madrid. You can get a train from Talavera de la Reina to Madrid and you will be in the city center of Madrid in about one hour and a half, actually a little bit under that. So, this apartment, list price 29,000 euros. 75 square meter and three bedrooms. Here is the description in English. It has three bedrooms, one bathroom, kitchen and living room. From the pictures, it is, it is actually not in a dire need for renovations, but you may want to do it. Actually, the, the entrance hall is pretty nice. But the apartment is a bit old, let's say. But you can just move in right away and then renovate slowly to your taste if you want to live in a place like this. There you go, bathroom. And actually this small city is quite nice. I really like the architecture of this quaint, picturesque street. It looks like a decent place that you can live. If you want to retire in Spain, for example, it seems to be an okay option if you are on a very tight budget. Here's the price per square meter. 29,000 euros is the price, list price. And then per square meter you're gonna pay 387 euros if you want to do if you want to get a mortgage for 30 years you'll pay just 77 euros per month 
if you give up down payment of 8,700 euros. So, and this is the, the actual, actually the map of Talavera de la Reina. As you can see, it's not very far from Madrid, also not very far from Toledo. It's a very good, actually, the location of this apartment. If you want to be close to Madrid, but you don't have to be there every day, you can go every weekend or even every day, but it's a one hour and a half train ride. You probably, it's probably a good option for this price. You cannot buy much in Madrid or even in the this area here. It's going to cost much more. Here is our second example, which is a nice apartment in the city of Oviedo, which is the capital of Asturias. The listing price is 55,000 euros and it has 101 square meters, approximately 1,000 square feet. Here's the description, you can read it in English. They have the Ultra Translate option here in Idealista. Building looks actually quite nice, as we can see. But inside the apartment there are not, not many pictures and it definitely needs some renovations. Price per square meter, 540 euros, which is quite amazing, I think, for Spain, considering the prices in Madrid and Barcelona. And here you can see how much you would pay if you would want to get a mortgage for this apartment. In 30 years, giving 30% as a down payment, you would pay 141 euros. And this is the location, which is in Oviedo. Oviedo has good transport connections to most parts of Spain, direct trains to Madrid. It's a pretty good city overall. The city center of Oviedo is one of the most beautiful I've seen in Spain. Even if you don't want to invest in the city, I definitely recommend you to visit this city. Now let's talk about our next example here. We have an apartment for sale in the town of Cabra. List price 40,000 euros. And it has 60 square meters and two bedrooms. As we can see here, the description in English, two bedroom, two bedroom apartment, kitchen, laundry room, bathroom and living room. It is actually in a better condition, but the price per square meter is also higher. So this is the apartment, living room, one bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, looks okay. And that's the outside of the building. List price 40,000, price per square meter 667 euros. It's a bit more expensive than the other examples, but still relatively acceptable. That's the mortgage calculation. Let's say if you would go 20 years, that would mean you'd have to pay 149 euros per month with a down payment of 30%. And this is the location. This is the town of Cabra. It's a slightly isolated, but not completely desolate. Let's put it this way. You have Cordoba, you have Granada and Sevilla, somewhere in between all in between all these cities, which is reasonable. But you'll probably need a car if you want to live in this place. Otherwise, transport-wise, it's probably not the easiest option to not to have a car in this place. And here we have the last example of this video, which is a small house in the town of Fonzaleche, which is in the northern part of Spain. List price 49,000 euros and built area 80 square meters, roughly 800 square feet. Here is the description in English. Two-story house, has one bedroom and one bathroom. Let's check the pictures then. That's the kitchen. Surrounding areas, I would assume. It's actually in a relatively decent condition. Nothing major to be done right away. The area looks all right, I would say. It actually looks quite nice. I really like these stone houses in Spain. There are many of them, especially in small 
smaller towns. And that's the list price, 49,000 euros. And the price per square meter is 612 euros, which is in the same range we were considering in this video. This is how much we would pay for the mortgage. And that's the map. As we can see here, it's kind of isolated, but not too much. It's close to Miranda de Ebro, which is a slightly bigger town. And then Logroño, which is a relatively mid-sized city, let's say, in the northern part of Spain. Here we are, not very far from Bilbao. That's it for the examples. Now, after we checked some properties in Spain, let's do some considerations when buying a cheap house or apartment in Spain. The first one, depending on the location, you will need a car. Public transport in Spain is widely available, but most of these cheap houses or cheap apartments, they tend to be in areas which are not in very high demand, and then you'll probably need a car, or you will have to rely on transportation that does not run very frequently. The second thing is, if you want to buy an apartment to rent it as an investment, it will be very difficult to find tenants, unless you get something very special at a decent price and at the same time in a, in a location with a decent demand. Third consideration, the property will have very low liquidity in case you want to sell it. So if we are talking about something below 700 euros per square meter, it will probably be a house or an apartment in a very low demand area. So it is a good thing if you want to buy an apartment to live in it, for example, if you want to retire in Spain, but if you want to flip it or get a profit, it's probably not going to be the best option because these are very low liquidity properties. And the last consideration I'd like to point is you can probably bargain the price heavily. Since there's low liquidity, there aren't many buyers interested in this property and even if the list price is something like 40,000 euros, it does not mean that you can't get it lower. And now the last part of this video, we're going to talk about the golden visa in Spain if you want to be a, a real estate investor. There are different types of golden visa in Spain, but we are just going to cover in this video the golden visa if you want to invest in real estate. The first requirement is you have to invest 500,000 euros to apply for a golden visa in Spain. But the key advantage is it can be one or multiple properties. So we can buy, let's say, four apartments, live in one of them, rent the other four, and you'll still be eligible to apply for the golden visa in Spain. Then another advantage is that you can renew it indefinitely. As long as you keep the investment of 500,000 euros in real estate in one or multiple properties, you can renew your golden visa and come to Spain, stay as much as you want, it will be fine. Another advantage is there is no minimum time to stay in the country to be able to renew it. So if you come to Spain and just spend one, one month per year, it will be good enough for you to renew your golden visa in Spain. But if you want to apply for permanent residency or citizenship, you have to live in Spain at least six months per year, which makes you a tax resident in Spain. So if you want to take the route of permanent residency and citizenship, you have to be a tax resident in Spain. But if you just want to spend some time of the year in Spain, you can still keep renewing the visa indefinitely, have access to all of the Schengen area, and you will not be a tax resident in Spain. After 10 years living in Spain, if you spend more than 6 months per year, you'll be able to apply for citizenship. That's the double of Portugal, for example, in which you can apply for citizenship after 5 years living in the country. But if you are a citizen of former Spanish colonies, for example like Mexico or Colombia, and even some countries like Brazil, Portugal or Andorra, you can apply for citizenship just after living two years in Spain. That's it for today's video. If you want to travel, move or invest abroad, you know what you have to do. Hit the like button, check our other videos, check the links in the description and most importantly, subscribe. See you next time.